All right, good evening. I'd like to call the North Aurora Village Board meeting for Monday, October 2nd, 2023, to order. Please join me in a silent prayer and meditation. All right, thank you. Please join me in a pledge of allegiance. Mayor Gafino. Here. Trustee Christensen. Here. Trustee Curtis. Here. Trustee Gately. Here. Trustee Lowry. Here. Trustee Nedgefedge. Here. Trustee Salazar. Here. All right. Thank you. I have a proclamation to read uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Whereas breast cancer is a second most commonly diagnosed form of cancer for women in the United States, remains the second leading cause of cancer death among American women. And whereas many of, of us know someone who may have had or has breast cancer, or even lost someone to this disease. Whereas early detection, improved treatment is believed to have significantly reduced the number of deaths caused by breast cancer. And whereas researchers, scientists, numerous nonprofit organizations are dedicated to discovering the cure for breast cancer. During the month of October, we acknowledge the extraordinary commitment and effort invested in this cause. Now, therefore, be Proclaim that I, Mark Gafino, Village President, and the Board of Trustees of North Aurora proclaim the month of October 2023 as Breast Cancer Awareness Month in the Village of North Aurora. Urge our community, mem community to show their support for all those and their loved ones in the fight against breast cancer. Date of this second day of October 2023. Uh, audience comments. Um, Bob? Bob. <coughs> yep. Coming up, state your state your name and address for us, please. Okay, my name is Bob Kamey, and I live in uh, North Aurora on Western Drive, Remington Landing. Western Drive is also known as the Indianapolis Speedway. Uh, there's a I think a speeding problem on that street that I'd like to know if you guys could address it somehow. Uh, there's a lot of children along that street. There's a lot of dog walkers and bicycle riders. They come off of a uh, Tanner Road there, 50 mile an hour, <clears throat> and then they seem to not know how to slow down going down Western. And Western has a curve in the entrance way. I don't know if you were familiar with that or not, but uh, that is also hard for the first few houses to even see someone coming in. So there have been several neighbors that asked me to address that with you folks here, I'll let you know, can a speed hump or s speed signs at least, or s something more be done on that street? Uh, I have been told that speed bumps are impossible to, to get past. I don't know why. City of Chicago has a lot of them. But anyway, uh, that's a concern of pretty many neighbors that live on that street. All okay, right. that's one thing. Uh, second thing that's been mentioned is uh, the need for a, a right-hand turn lane on uh, Mead. I don't know if that's a possibility, but uh, with the speed limit of 50 on Tanner Trails there, it gets pretty uh, scary to turn into that road. Like a D-cell lane you're talking, right? Pardon? A D-cell lane? I'm talking a, the D-cell lane, right? You're talking about coming off of Tanner to turn on Mead? Yes. Yeah, I live in that subdivision, so I know it didn't make sense why they have a D-cell lane at Western and D-cell lane at Bennett. Majority of people pulling in out of Mead, and you think there'd be a D-cell lane there. I brought it up the staff periodically. That road is in ours, though. It's Kane County, so sorry, it's a county you. road. Yeah. Yeah, it's a county road, so it doesn't fall under our jurisdiction right now anyway. 
But uh, same for the speed on that road. I think at 50 is too fast for Tanner Road. Um, it's hard to pull out of there and get rear-ended. So, But back to uh, Western. So we've had uh, the speed trailer, and I know the police have been out there, not recently, but it is a um, long stretch, and people do um, go pretty fast on there. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, and at one time there was one of those flashing uh, police signs there. Yeah. That that didn't seem to do much good after it was there yeah. for about three <laughs> three yeah. days. And people Unfortunately, realized. a lot of the streets out there, people speed, and it really falls on the neighbors and the people that live there. You know what I mean? They, we can't have a police on every corner and a speed bump. There's uh, People would want a speed bump in front of every house. You know, it's like it's unfortunate, but um, I don't know if the deputy chief have anything to add to that as far as, uh, you know, how we can curtail it beyond a speed trailer because people slow down when there's a speed trailer when there's a officer parked there they slow down but when it disappears then they go fast again you know. i'll put a request in for extra patrols mayor uh is there a specific time you're seeing sir specific. is there a specific time well you know it's probably the worst around between four and seven at night you know as it gets darker it might not be so bad uh but i think rush hour times are the worst but in uh the long summer days it's been an awful lot of people that go down that road way too fast most i mean uh all day i can't i'd say the worst time is around four o'clock i think the rush hour in the morning too i've seen them it's the same thing that six to eight or six to nine or seven to nine that period too yeah. that people are going to work and kids are going to school and yeah i don't think it's so bad in the mornings because school buses go down there and i think uh that slows a lot of folks down, down. So. that's a long that's a long stretch at western isn't where does it look is it the whole the whole road is being speeders well i live about three houses in and uh and then from my from tanner to the first stop sign which okay. is uh bauer bauer thank yeah. you mm -hmm. uh that's that's probably where i see it okay. most uh but i know they go farther north down to where western becomes remington right. it's close by you mark Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know, like speed limit signs. I mean, it's kind of common knowledge, right? 25, if it's not posted, I don't know how often we put there, signs. They, we have the neighborhood, right? Yeah. We enter the neighborhood on all the streets. It says neighborhood speed limit 25 miles an hour. Yeah. We, we yeah. Post that. What's the speed limit there? 25. Oh, okay. All residential streets are basically. Okay. Is it posted 25? Yeah. We can adjust. We can look at that too, just to make sure the signs are up. So we can double check that as well. But unfortunately, it's a common problem throughout the community where people people drive fast, you know, they're on their phone, distracted, you know. We have everybody want to sign in front of their house and a speed bump everywhere. So it's like, you know, it's yeah. It's kind of a tough thing. Happened to the, uh, the the law about no phones while you're driving, but I don't think anybody watches that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all right so <laughs> so um you'll look into that chief yes sir yeah, we'll okay. uh, put an extra watch out immediately and we'll have cars set up there as they're available thank you that's about what we can do right now so okay i brought up about the right turn lane yeah at mead the third thing is uh a wish maybe impractical but a sidewalk along tanner on the north side of the road been working on that too to do, yeah. are you yeah cool steve All can right. you kind of interject but right tanner's a county road yeah so so tanner road is a county road so we have actually asked them if they have any intention of putting a sidewalk out there and not in the near future so it's uh it would be at the village's expense and as far as it goes with the diesel lane, we can always call the county and petition them and see if they're willing to do a speed study, see about what the speed is, and whether a diesel lane is is needed or warranted under their engineering guidelines. That's something we can reach I out to. I think the speed ask. needs to be dropped down because 50 was okay when it was farmland, but people pulling on them subdivisions, they're right on your tail as they come from the uh, west, come around, heading towards uh, Deer Path. I mean, they just 
right up your tail. Sure. So yeah, we can ask yeah. the county to look into that. Fast, okay. Well, that's it. Yeah, thank thank you. you for listening and uh, yeah. appreciate your yeah. concerns. Yep. Thanks for your comments. Yep. Anybody else? <clears throat> All right. Consent agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. The rope, please. Trustee Salazar? Yes. Trustee Christensen? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Yes. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Nedgeveg? Yes. All right. Thank you. Under new business, item one. Um, Joe? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, Board of Trustees. Uh, in 2022, uh, on the approval of the Village Board, we ordered three black Ford Explorers from Morrow Brothers Ford. Uh, Morrow Brothers Ford is our state bid process, so they deal with all uh, vehicle purchases in the state of Illinois for police vehicles. Um, at the time the three vehicles were ordered, uh, Morrow Brothers advised us they were having difficulty in finding adequate vehicles for due to various issues with supply chain, um, which brought us to this year. We carried over in the 23-24 fiscal year, 152100 that was for the purchase of these vehicles. Uh, we reached back out to Morrow Brothers. They do have two vehicle, two Ford Explorer vehicles available for us. And in addition, they're able to offer us another Ford F-150 pickup truck. Uh, this is ideal for our current situation as we can utilize the two Ford Explorers immediately to replace aging vehicles in our fleet in the administrative process. And then the Ford uh, F-150 would be utilized in the traffic division to haul the um, truck scales, which are a heavy item for the explorers in and of itself. Uh, the total purchase would be um, 138730 which is $8,534 more than what we, uh, we had. Um, we are looking to basically cancel the current existing order of the three Ford Explorers that we had and go ahead with this purchase, which is the two Ford Explorers and the Ford F-150 pickup truck. Motion approved. Second. Discussion? Over row, please. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Neshvedge? Yes. Trustee Salazar? Yes. Trustee Christensen? Yes. Trustee Curtis? All right, thank you. Item two, Nathan. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this item is the special use permit for 1167 Oak Street uh, for the banquet facility. If you recall, it's a, a small event space called Sage Event Studio, approximately 1,800 square feet um, for events um, around up to 100 people. Um, it was here on September 18th uh, for the Committee of the Whole and at the Planning Commission on September 5th. Um, and it, neither group had any uh, conditions to add, um, so we're ready to go for final approval. Uh, Tiffany is here if you have any last minute questions, but if not, staff is ready to go. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. <clears throat> well, please. Trustee Salazar? Yes. Trustee Christensen? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Yes. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Nedgevedge? Yes. All right. Thank you. Item three, Steve. Thank you, Mayor. Item number three is an approval of an ordinance amending the North Aurora Code uh, for increasing the number of class L1 uh, liquor license. This is for a hidden beauty salon. It's the only L1 license we would have in town. Uh, it is for a salon who would like to have wine as part of their offerings for uh, their beauty packages. And this was discussed at the uh, last committee of the whole meeting. Motion approved. Set. Discussion. Roll, please. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Nedgevedge? Yes. Trustee Salazar? Yes. Trustee Christensen? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Yes. All right. Thank you. Item four, Steve. Item number four is approval of an ordinance amending uh, the section of our liquor code uh, re regarding the uh, regulation of supplemental video game licenses. And so we've gone to the committee of the whole, as you know, for two workshop discussions. Uh, the the thing from the majority of the board at those uh, meetings was to continue to prohibit video gaming parlors. Uh, the rules are being changed and amended in this code uh, that as follows, we've updated the language on the definition of what a video gaming parlor is to make it easier for people to see. Uh, we have the ability now, we're requesting that we have the ability upfront that a business has to provide us their financial data upon request to ensure 
that if we think they're a video gaming parlor, they have to prove that they're actually making more money off of their uh, liquor and food sales. And then part of that application process would be an affidavit that they have to sign saying they're not a video game and parlor, but also expressly giving us the consent to enforce all of these provisions within the code. Um, and then the big one we discussed was about how to regulate how many machines a uh, establishment could have. That is now being changed to one video gaming machine for every 500 square feet of interior building. That is uh, in the code. We even put um, special wording in that it says they usually give us a floor plan as part of the initial application to the board. We're asking for a fully dimensioned floor plan so that we can do the math and actually do the square footage calculations. Um, and then the last thing is uh, we're trying to restrict advertising in a way that it reflects the business is primarily a restaurant and not a video game and parlor. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Steve, I had one question. Yes. Is the is the advertising, it must be about the food, which is the restaurant, but can they also include that there's video gaming or does the advertising has to be just about the restaurant? No, they can, they can still have video gaming advertising. It just has to be done in a manner where uh, it's ancillary to their advertising of food. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Trustee Nedgevedge. Yes. Trustee Salazar? Yes. Trustee Christensen? Yes. Trustee Curtis? Yes. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. All right. Thank you. Item five. Brian? Thank you, Mayor. This is a approval for a new purchase of a truck for the Water Division. Um, back in June, the Water Division received its fifth employee. Um, at this time, we only have four trucks for five employees. Um, so we kind of did some research and realized that um, we have a 1994 Grumman step van that is used for water main breaks and fire hydrant repairs. So that gets used very rarely. So what we're going to do is purchase this truck and it'll actually um, be used for both purposes. So all the water division trucks will have tools to fix water main breaks. So we're not relying on one vehicle for that. So each truck will be outfitted with the tools needed um, to perform this work. So it allows us to work in a more efficient manner and actually save money by by downsizing and getting rid of a truck. Um, so we're looking for the uh, approval to purchase a 2023 GMC uh, enclosed service body truck from Haggerty Chevy in the amount of $89,696. Motion approved. Discussion? Roll, please. Trustee Gately? Yes. Trustee Lowry? Yes. Trustee Nedgevedge? Yes. Trustee Salazar? Yes. Trustee Christensen? Yes. Trustee Curtis? All right, thank you. That concludes new business. Um, village present report. I don't have anything. Uh, trustee comments. Administrator report. Uh, just a couple of quick things. I just wanted to point out that the vehicle purchases tonight uh, were unique in some way. As as you know, the the board has been very flexible with the staff to help us find vehicles. Now that it's become extremely difficult to procure them. Um, one of the things I have to commend the staff, though, is with Brian, for instance, on the water trucks, if you remember when we did the budget, we were going to replace the truck that we're purchasing right now, basically one of our old trucks with a, an expensive truck that was only going to be used for specialized circumstances, per, uh, particularly water main break situations. We don't have many of them. So what we did was retrofit our fleet, spent some money to retrofit our existing vehicles, and then bought a less expensive vehicle. And the the overall result of that is less money spent and better vehicles for the staff at, at the end day where basically they can actually service a water main break from those existing daily trucks they use. And then as far as the police go, something that's going to be coming up in the future uh, at a upcoming committee of the whole as, as soon as maybe this next one is the fact that explorers are extremely hard to find right now. And as, as we said, they're not even orders being placed a year ago, aren't even being placed to the dealerships anymore. And we're hearing that Ford may not even provide Ford Explorers next year. So um, Joe, uh, Deputy Chief Gorski and uh, Joe DeLeo, Chief DeLeo, and a few of us talked. And I like the fact that the police are willing to look at other vehicles. And we think we may have found a solution to switch our vehicles over. Um, and that'll be a discussion we'll, we'll run with the board at the next meeting. Um, and then one other thing I wanted to point out is um, I thought Brian did a great job of our road program ending, ending this year. And um, one of the things that we've had complaints about in the past is the way our landscaping has been done as part of the road program, whether it be the type of grass seed, the type of dirt. Um, I know the mayor has, has specifically talked about grass seed and we changed certain grass seeds to try to 
try new ones out, see if they'll they'll grow better. Um, but in this case, just like last year, we we're having trouble for subcontractors coming back to finish dirt work. And Brian, thinking on his toes, uh, had the staff come in. And what we did is we basically have been doing some of the dirt work because the contractor said they're not going to be able to get there anytime soon. And what we're going to do is just track hours and we're going to bill it back to them. So, and they're aware of that. And so we're like, fine, we're going to do it. We're going to do it right. And we're going to, we're going to bill it back to you then for our time. But this way the residents don't have to wait and they get the grass right away. Yeah, it's a good idea. That's yeah. all I have. Permit reports. I have one, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Uh, Deputy Chief Pizzecki was advised by the Federal Emergency Management Agency in coordination with the Federal Communications Commission that they're going to be conducting a nationwide test uh, this Wednesday, October 4th at 1.20 p.m. Central Time. What that means is that they're going to test the emergency alert system and the wireless emergency alert system simultaneously. Um, anybody who has their devices tuned in will receive alert. Uh, if, if it's in English, they'll receive it in English. If it's in Spanish, they'll receive it in Spanish. Uh, the only reason they would cancel the test is if there's a threat of, of uh, severe weather, they will postpone it for another date. However, um, they will probably be conducting this on the 4th as it looks like our weather's pretty good around here. Um, we already notified the community uh, through Facebook and uh, Instagram. Uh, as well as our Nixle alert system. So uh, this is just as uh, information for everybody. All right. Thank you. Um, that finishes everything up. Motion to adjourn. Oh, so moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Great. Start the community as a whole shortly here. <laughs>